All right. Welcome, everyone. It's week two of our mindset training with the amazing Taylor Worry, and he blessed us last week with a great training. I hope you got to watch the replay and took some time. Go to the event, uh, go to the training page that we have on Facebook or message me, any one of us leaders, we can get you the replay. But otherwise, what we're going to do is focus the next three weeks, every Wednesday, same time. Taylor has gifted us with about 30 minutes of his time. And he is the uh, uh, vice president or the actual um, leader. I wish of I was the vice president. I'm the vice, director. <laughs> Life Vantage, I said vice president. Life Vantage leader uh, experience. Um, he's the head of that. So the director of the Life Vantage uh, red carpet program, if you would say. And just he gives uh, great um, his time all on calls all day long, just helping people, connect people with red carpet leaders. And he is basically what he told me and uh, Julia a couple of weeks ago, he said, I'm kind of like the bodyguard for Life Vantage. Like people bring the top leaders into me and I kind of filter them and protect Life Vantage from e egos or people that have wrong intentions. So you guys, this is, you know, he goes over and above to protect our, our company from, you know, the wrong, type of people that could maybe, you know, not be a good influence. So that is what we really, really uh, are so excited to, to learn from you today, Taylor. And I'm going to toss it over to you and let you just run with the call. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Marilyn. You're the best. You guys are all amazing. It's just so fun to be with you. It's so fun to do this and, and to see the breakthroughs with some of the other calls over the weeks. I'm so excited to hear about some of your stuff, but but like she said, I, it is um, it is really fun to be in my role because I take it very seriously. Know that when it comes to this red carpet program, that we are not poachers. That that I don't know, this is the last I will ever speak about this on the series. But um, we work really, really hard. I, I told the executive team and the C-suite when I joined this company that I'll protect this company and the culture that you represent, like I protect my last name. Um, that it is that important to me, is paramount to me. Uh, because I know what one bad egg can do. And so I am just so excited that everyone that we've been bringing on all this new influx of red carpet leadership, some amazing stories that you're going to start hearing um, have just been just culture fits to the best of, of our ability. They're just such great people. So let's talk week two. Week one, you guys were working on an act of service to start your day. This was really just Breaking into kind of this whole mindset ideology, uh, you know, a lot of people focus on it from time to time fragmented. It was really just starting this week off with a very conscious act of saying, look, I'm going to wake up every morning and I'm going to start my day with an act of service. And then I'm going to track how the rest of that day went. Did I find other acts of service to do? Did they, they come easier to me other than, than other days when I didn't start my day with an act of service? Then the other homework assignment was not only do we love random acts of kindness, but I challenged you over the last seven days to do seven conscious acts of kindness, to go out into the world looking for ways to make people's lives better, whether it's a phone call, a candy bar, uh, a whatever it might be, uh, a reuniting with a friend. I mean, there's a million examples of ways that you could have done this. And it looks like we have a bunch of people with their hands up. So I want to uh, take a few minutes here and let me start with, um, Michelle, I saw your hand up and then you put it down, but I'm going to call on you. Michelle, tell me a little bit about your experience. How was your last week? How are you, first of all? I'm great. Thank you. It's sunny above Good. the clouds. So Yes, it is. Yes. Um, so uh, at the beginning of the week, I was at home and um, I was traveling last week as well. But when I was at home, I just woke up and I did it without thinking. But when I was traveling, I, um, I noticed that my intention was like, it wasn't as laser focused. So I realized I'm a creature of habit. And so when my environment changes, my habit changes. And that was very eye opening to me to be like, oh, I'm not consistent in this. So, you know, whether regardless of where I am to make it be consistent, it was very eye opening. But I, of course, um, you know, random acts of kindness is kind of who I am. So I always was giving compliments, taking pictures. So at the end of the day, I could always, you know, say I did it and I did the conscious acts of it. 
but that doing it very first thing before I do something for myself is what I need to get consistent with. So I'm going to keep doing it this week and um, until it becomes a habit because I've realized it's, I'm kind of sloppy with it. Well, I, I, Michelle, I really appreciate your transparency. And there's a couple key things that I want people to take away from this. Um, number one is consistency is key. Um, what, what you do over a long period of time. I mean, and they say it takes whatever, 90 days, 30 days. I've heard a million different, you know, between a month and three months of consistent activity to be able to create a, a real long-term habit. Um, and so consistency is key. But the other really important thing that Michelle said on there, that, I, that she had that eye-opening moment and maybe someone else is having it right now because they didn't travel, but that when she travels, as a, as a creature of habit that she gets thrown out of her, out of her comfort zone when she travels and all of those things that come so naturally become a little bit more of, uh, you know, distant, you know, they just become a little distant first. So that's, you know, is that something for you in your life that you notice that when you're in your house, when you're in your safe zone, that it's easy to do the little thing. But then when you leave that house, when you're at someone else's place or when you're when you're at a family member's house, is it harder to to do that or is it easier? All things to be aware of. For Michelle, she had a big eye opening moment there. And hopefully going forward again, I, I know she is. She's going to be cognizantly aware when she travels because she travels a lot. She's always on the go. And so that's something for her that she's you know, it's just it's great to it's great to be aware of. So thank you so much for sharing, Michelle. I really appreciate it. What else did you have? You're welcome. Um, I just have one more thing. So for me, what it translates to for network marketing is that start stop thing. Like I'm always starting and stopping the habit. And so it's like, if we just stay consistent, it'll keep the ball rolling. And so that goes for not only random acts of kindness and doing stuff for others first, but also network marketing is like, I've started and stopped for 16 years. And so it's time to be consistent. And I've done pretty well. <laughs> yep, a hundred percent. Yeah, you're 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 a red carpet leader. You're a rock star leader, and so there's there's no doubt about that. Um, but I agree. I think it's time for you to plant your flag for the last time, yeah. um, and to make those decisions that come hell or high water. You're you're going to the top because yeah. that's where you belong. Um, thank you so much, Michelle. God bless you. I appreciate you, Jody. Let's hear it, sister. How was your last week? It was great. Um, I, I, I can relate to what Michelle said because I can't say I was consistent every single day, but it made such a difference when I did my acts of kindness and, and I started at home with it. You know, it's, I think it's really easy to take it, take for granted our spouses or those that we live with. And so I have this little book I've had forever called the little letters of thanks. And there's just these little tiny, tiny notes you can write on and fold them up like a little envelope and they're all different uh, different ways of saying thank you. So one night I left one on my husband's pillow. He always goes to bed earlier than I do because he gets up so early. So I left a little note on there, thanked him for all we, he does for our family. And the next morning I woke up and he hadn't got up yet either. I, for some reason he slept in, but um, so I, I got up and I made his favorite breakfast cinnamon roll cake. And it's not something I eat or ever make if it's just us because it's for a lot of people. And so I got up and I made it and he woke up, looked in the kitchen with a big smile on his face. He's oh my gosh, are you making cinnamon roll cake? And he goes, I dreamt about that the other night. <laughs> and it had been like a, probably a year or two since I'd made it. And he literally like, I hear him get the dog leash and take the dog for a walk. And that is not something he does unless I ask him, can you please take the dog for a walk this morning? It's always me that walks the dog. So things like that, like that just really warmed my heart by just mm. me doing those little things that, you know, I got in return and it, I wasn't going for that, but I mean, it was just, it was very sweet. Isn't that amazing though? That's what I always like you, you're not doing it. You, that's why I wanted people to focus on is there's no return necessary in, a, in an act of kindness and then and when you're doing an act of service you're doing it purpose purposely just to be a person of service in someone else's life without any reciprocation and i love so much that that happened because i mean it's just like it is a pure example of real love when love is 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 exuded love is returned 
it's the 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 the, the truest form of karma mm -hmm. it's like you do something for the right reasons for someone that you genuinely love and and watch how that was i mean it, it gets me emotional to think about i mean it's like I just imagine the rest of that day being really, really beautiful between the two of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and so what the goal is, is what can you do to keep that up? What can you do to find new ways to feel that? And that's the fun in being a giver. And that's the fun in being a person, a, a successful giver, a person of value is, is your brain isn't thinking of, of excuses. It's thinking of ideas of ways that you can be more valuable to people in your life. It's not like, oh, I gotta go do the laundry. It's like, if I go do the laundry right now, I wonder if like, like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna be a great thing. Like, I know that she doesn't have the time to go do the dishes. I'm gonna go do them real fast. Like, it just becomes this fun little contagious game almost. You gamify being a person of service. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I appreciate you sharing. Was there anything else that you wanted to share? Thank you so much for saying. Oh, yeah. Um, well, actually, one thing I, when I went to the store, you know, I always go through the self checkout and there's always the same lady. I see her almost every time. And, and, um, you know, I don't wear my mask when I'm at that store. That's not really necessary anymore. And, but many do. So I'm, you know, I smile at her every time I use her name. Her name is Anne. And, and, um, you know, I, I asked her, I said, you know, what's your favorite, what's your favorite snack? Is there something you would like? And are you, what's your favorite? And she's like, well, you know, she didn't really know how to answer me. I said, well, I really want to just treat you to something today. Cause I, you know, I appreciate how well you take care of me, how much you smile, mm -hmm. how you, you know, our conversations. And so she goes, well, she went over like behind her little counter. She pulled out this little bag of buns that were like 49 cents on clearance. Well, I was going to maybe get these. <laughs> so that's great. Throw those in too, but get yourself a snack too. You know, so yeah. she was just so shocked that I wanted to do something like that. She, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm like, yes, please. And, um, you know, it's just, it was just a great experience. hundred percent. I, um, I appreciate you sharing that. I think that there's so many moments in which where you pushed it to the point where you needed to, to get it accomplished. You kept going, you kept going, you didn't stop. No, you don't have to do it. I'm sure there's multiple times you said, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. You don't have to do anything, I'm okay. And you kept going, no, I wanna do something. Mm -hmm. I, wanna, I wanna push you guys as well in the future that there's a lot of times where we can be a diffuser, where we can bring beauty to an ugly situation. About three days ago, it's funny that this happened, but it was about three days ago, I went to uh, the grocery store and I was checking out, say a self checkout, just like Jody was. And a lady next to me was losing her mind because what she had done is she had used a credit card in the self checkout line that was a credit card only line. And her card had maxed and she only had so much on the card. And there was like 60 cents remaining on her bill to pay for the rest of her food. And she had cash to pay for it, but there was no money left on her card. And so the, 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 the self-help, the self-checkout lady was over there going, ma'am, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, I can't, like, it doesn't, this machine doesn't take money. I can't. And if you don't have a card that works, like, I don't know. And she's screaming at this lady. Everyone's watching. Huge scene. Is, is, is literally creating itself because this woman's going, I'm not taking all my groceries back over to this line. I'm not doing, you guys need to figure it out. And in a moment, I just walked her over real quick. I said, ma'am, put my hand on her bag. Just ma'am, is this all that's remaining? Is this 61 cents is on your bill? And before she goes, yep. And before she could say anything, I swiped my card and I just walked away. I said, have a beautiful day. Doesn't need to go any further than this. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. God bless you. Take care. And I walked away. And it re, re, the, the situation was done. No managers, no security need to be called. No police need to be called. Like, again, you can, you can be that person in people's lives. And a lot of the times we see that ugliness or we see that animosity when we're out and about. And it's like either turn our phones on to record it because it's dramatic or it's like, get away, kids. Don't look at that. Don't listen to her. Like, walk away. That's like, she's screaming. That's great. There's crazy people in the world. It's just what happens. You can be a diffuser in this world. That's another great side. That just happened to me a few days ago. And so I just wanted to remind in those situations when we're so quick to go, 
man, that was like, you see how crazy that person was that you can be the person that, that, cause you never know what that woman's day was like. Maybe she just found out that her mother passed away and she went in there and she's having a complete breakdown and is losing everything. She has nothing going right in her life right now. And that 61 cents is the straw that broke the Campbell's back and it was done for her. She was done. Every one of us on this call have been at a point in life where if one 61 cent decision didn't go our way, we were gonna snap. So I look at every single person I come in contact with with that same gratitude, with that same compassion that I don't know what you're going through right now. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna limit this one outburst as the, the sole culmination of who you are. Let me just try to make it better. So Jody, thank you so much for sharing. Um let's go over to Helen. We'll do one more real fast and then uh, we'll get into E2's message. Helen, how are you? Oh, you're on mute, dear. There we go. Sorry about that. There she is. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Um, so my life, I, I did do this. I am up at five o'clock every morning. It's just my husband and myself. He's retired and uh, he sleeps in in the morning now. <laughs> so um, what I found I had to do was because a lot of people don't want to be texted at five o'clock in the morning. They don't want a messenger, you know, uh, and I'm not going to the grocery store. So what I did is I kind of plotted out what I was going to do, but I had my vaccine uh, last Saturday for my second one. And so, I mean, these people are there on a Saturday. There were literally a minimum of seven or eight people at this little clinic in a little town and I interacted with four of them. So I thank each of them for giving up their Saturday, first of all, because you know people like me, who I still have a full-time job, you know, didn't want to have to take off time from work. And you know, and I live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And when I first started in Green Bay, which is you know greater areas, two hundred and fifty thousand people, I couldn't get in on a Saturday. I had to drive thirty minutes to get into this little yep. clinic, and I was able to do it. So, and then I have uh, friends at work. Our company has been bought out. So we are all going through a very stressful situation where we've kind of all been split up. And of course we're all remote. And so we have to rely on each other to kind of help each other out. And so, you know, I've had three people that I've messaged and said, you know, I don't know that I've told you lately because we're not in the office. You don't see each other face to face, but you do interact, you know, through like a uh, kind of a group chat and that thanking them for their assistance and helping out. I have a friend at work when we were in the office, I didn't know her very well, but we've uh, become friends uh, through Facebook and we've had some medical challenges um, like with my husband and when my sister passed away in the fall and this gal consistently, you know, she'll message me, but more often it's, it's through a text. If, and if I'm not at work, she's texting me, are you okay? Is something going wrong? You know? And so I just, you know, thanked her today, you know, I really appreciate your friendship and the fact that, you know, you're checking in with me to make sure everything is going okay. And she offers, you know, if you and Dave need something, you know, I'll drive over there, I'll help you out, you know, let me know. And it's like, I never do, you know, it's never gotten to that point. But I just appreciate the sentiment and the friendship. Of course. And, uh, and my husband being retired, he's always been a gem. Uh, we've been married almost 45 years now. But uh, he, you know, he's always cooked and he's helped around the house. It's always been a partnership. And we were laughing at, on my lunch hour today. So he's been retired since January 1st. And I said, you know, I don't think I've made myself one meal for lunch. He always has it ready for me or ready to go so that when I get off the phone, he's heating it up. And, you know, and my kids are wonderful and they, you know, they're a distance away, uh, both of them. And they're always checking in with us and, you know, just the appreciation. Uh, and, you know, and there are more people I need to, to do that too. So I have to kind of think in the morning, okay, so who am I going to thank today? Or, and I don't do a lot of grocery shopping because Dave's doing a lot of that. So, you know, I'm trying to find creative ways to, to make that work. Well, I love it. And I think that that's amazing. I'll tell you what, I, um, I think I told this group, I, I, there's, you know, 
the 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 book that I'm writing right now is is basically the the culmination the the whole story of this this my first book is is going to be called the the day after you die a guide to living your best life the, the day after you die a guide to living your best life and the whole question I pose in this book is why is it that people the people that we love most on this planet why is it that we wait until they are no longer here for us to speak the beauty and the greatness mm -hmm. about them into existence why is it that we wait why is right. it that, that that like i mean that the, the the day after someone that you love more than anything on the planet is the day that you're going to say the best things that you have ever said about them mm -hmm. why why wait so this whole book that i'm writing is a culmination of stories from every great thought leader i've ever had the honor of knowing of moments in their life where someone has spoken greatness into their life when they didn't have to and and so a lot of, of what I focus on is exactly what you're doing, Helen. A lot of my acts of kindness, a lot of my conscious love and acts of service are just that. Are, I mean, because what I did is I made a conscious effort. This is something I did three years ago. Now, it's almost been four years now. But I decided that in an effort to become a, a person of more value, I had to realize and learn how to speak greatness and love into others without reciprocating. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do. It's really, really hard to do. It's hard to just constantly love others and not have a little in the back of your head of going, okay, my turn. Like, what are you going to tell me that's nice about me now? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's like there's, there's a little bit of that in everybody. And I had to consciously work it out of myself. And there was a point where I made the decision that I have a large family, but I decided that I was going to call every single member of my family for a calendar year every month about 60 phone calls, 60 to 70 phone calls every single month. And the only intention of those phone calls was to call and tell those people that I love them, that I was appreciative for them, that they, that they were valued in my life, that they mattered to me, that I was, I was really proud of what they were doing and the people that they were becoming, that I didn't need anything, that I was just calling to tell them that I love them and I hope they had a beautiful rest of their day, rest of their week, rest of their month. And I learned over the years, I mean, now three years, three and a half years in, I probably make about 30 phone calls a month to family members because about half of them either got annoyed or said, okay, I get it. Like I'm busy. Stop calling me all the time. Like, it's like, I, we only have to talk every month. I got it. And that's okay. But you realize the people in your life that are going to be, want those relationships. Right. And then you continue and you build them. It was important for me because now I talk to all the family members that, that want to have those relationships with me every, every week. We talk all the time. But again, when I have those conversations, the days that I have following those conversations are filled with value. I get done with that conversation. I, I go to the gas station and I'm like, your hair looks amazing. Oh my gosh, you've got the most amazing smile. You like, I mean, like, what do you do outside of this? Because you have got such a personality. Like, I mean, I'm always... It just flows out of me after I have one of those conversations. So I love that you are choosing to focus on those words of affirmation, that those words of, of love and kindness. I think it's so important. Helen, I really appreciate you sharing. And uh, I hope that you and your husband have an awesome week ahead with this next challenge because it's about to get uncomfortable. Are you guys ready to get a little uncomfortable? That was my best singing voice. You ready? It's going to get a little rowdy. We're ready. All right. So. Week two, I'm gonna get pacing because I get, I get rowdy when I get excited. Week two, in week two, we focus on the social media aspect of mindset. Most of you had a social media before you joined a network marketing business, but for some reason, when you join network marketing, it's almost like, you, like your page all of a sudden became dead, like your life was dedicated to your business. Your social media pages became dedicated to your business. You, your, your engagement, I guarantee you, if I went to 90% of your pages right now and looked at the last 50 posts, 99% of the engagement on your posts would be people that are either already in your business or cross mine already in life vanity. There's no new people. There's no new conversations being had. There's a lot of, hey, are you activated? And a bunch of people in life vantage going, I am. I'm going, okay, cool. Nothing for really me to follow up with here. Not much for me to say after that. And then you find like every once in a while, Brandon Cunningham will post like some intriguing post or Tara Wilson will put up something intriguing and gets a lot of engagement. So everyone jumps on it. There's stuff like that. And it's like, I get it. 
But I want to remind you guys something. You're all people outside of life ethics. You're all people with lives, with networks. I would assume that everyone on this call has anywhere from 500 to 4,000 friends on their Facebook account, on their social media accounts combined, whether you use primarily Instagram or whatever it is. But you're connected. You've got people you're connected to. The goal, I'm going to tell you your homework assignment, then we're going to talk about it. Your homework assignment for the next seven days is to go live seven times on Facebook every day for no less than five minutes. Your goal with this Facebook Live is to not talk about life manage at all. Your goal with this Facebook Live is to do this on your notes. For those of you taking notes, write this down. Write down one, two, three, four, five on your notepad. And now I want you to sit and I want you to think for a second while I'm talking. Think about things that you love and you're passionate about outside of life vantage. Your grandchildren, your children, your dogs, your cats, crocheting, golfing, traveling, investing. What do you, what do you care about? What is, I mean, because I get it. If you're like, person that's going to like fight back on me and be like, Taylor, all I care about is activating. All I care about is oxidative stress. All I care about is life vantage. It's like, okay, well, okay. But I would assume that before life vantage, you had passions, you had things that you cared about, you had things that that mattered to you. And that's what I'm going to push you for the next seven days to go on and talk about. I'm going to tell you that through doing this exercise with the thousands of people I have done this now with, I have seen more people have genuine and authentic conversations with people that they have not heard from or seen on their Facebook pages, interacting with them. And I mean, I had a story, multiple stories of people going, I, I hadn't heard from this person in five years. And you know what they said to me when we talked is I see all of your stuff. They see every live you do. They see all the posts you make, but they don't engage with a single one of them because they feel if they do, they're going to get baited into a link. They're going to get baited into a presentation. They're going to get baited into a, a, a you know, a obligatory, you know, I feel obligated now to buy something from you as a friend. You're running for a rank. I don't want to be that mean person that says, no, I'm not even going to take the call. I'm not even going to engage. I'm not going to like the post. God forbid, if I like the post, she's going to go through and message everyone that liked it. Um, it's like, and so the goal of this over the next seven days is to go live every single day for five minutes, at least about something that you're passionate about, something that you love, something that matters to you. And then to engage with your audience, put up there, getting ready, put a, put up there, taking the kids to school, put up there, whatever the comment is, whatever the, the little, the little title of the video is hanging in the backyard, um, whatever, whatever it might be. And then I want you guys just to have some authentic conversations. Do you know how easy it is to have a conversation wherein you're sitting there and going, man, it has been such a beautiful day. The sun's out. It's hot. Oh my gosh. I'm so thirsty. Hang on one sec. Man, that is so good. You got a big drink of Axio there. You don't need to say, man, that was so good. So glad I had my Axio from Life Vantage that you can get from my link that's in the comments. You can just go, oh my gosh, that's the best flavor. I'm so excited. They just got that new flavor. I, I just totally forgot that we got the strawberry splash. I mean, oh man, it's amazing. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Then you get people on your post going, what was that that you were drinking? My whole goal in your, like for you with your life, with your life vantage business is to have a funnel of people saying, tell me more not a funnel of people saying, I've heard enough. So many of you have a funnel of people that have said, I've heard enough. I got it. I know what you do. Got it. My goal is for you to be interest gatherers. My goal is for you to have people coming to you saying, Lori, what was that? Mia, what was that? I mean, how easy is it for, for some of you ladies to do a get ready with me live in the morning and just use the skincare? Again, you don't need to be going, this is step one of my life vantage skincare, the anti-aging cream. Wouldn't know what I would do without this. You can just say, hey, I'm doing my morning routine. This is what I do every morning. I do my skincare routine. The kids are running around the background. It's crazy. It's, you know, got a lot of stuff going on, this, that, and the other. And you're just putting it on your face. 
And then you do your makeup after that. And then you go run around. It's very simple to then have people go, what was that skincare that you were putting on? I've never seen that before. What was that skincare? Gather interest, get people excited about what it is that you're doing. And then again, most of you need to just allow your whole network to put their guard down when it comes to you on social media. Most of you have just been kind of force feeding yourself down your network's throats uh, via your posts and um, post however you want to post. I'm not here to tell you how to post. My only advice for you on social media is to take a personal inventory. Go to your Facebook page as soon as this call is done and scroll back for six months and then start scrolling up post by post and ask yourself one question. Would I follow me? Is this thought provoking? Is this engaging? Is this valuable content? Or is this just a lot of sharing of links and a lot of, you know, kind of copy and paste cookie cutter information? Um, is there any tangible, is there, you know, Les Brown always says, never tell a point without making, a, or never make a point without telling a story, never tell a story without making a point. Are there stories in your content? Are people getting value from your content or are they just getting information that they could get anywhere else? All important questions to be asking yourself. But going forward, like I said, for this next seven days, your goal is to just have fun with social media. This challenge has freaked a lot of people out, but honestly, the, the results um, speak for themselves. Just do it. Trust me. If you don't trust yourself, just trust me. Just go have fun with it. Because what it's going to lead to, I know you're freaked out, Lori. I know. I get it. Trust me, sister. I get it. But what it's going to lead to, day one, you might not have that many views or that many much engagement. Day two, you'll get a little bit more. By day three, people are going to be wondering in your network what's going on. And don't say I'm doing a challenge and I'm doing this thing for this you know, mindset series I'm in. So I have to go live every day. Don't let that be your cop out where you, you blame it on some else as to the reason why you're, you're being a, 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 you know, a valuable contributor to a social media platform. Don't blame it on me. You're doing this to make your life better. This is, this is, I'm just, I'm giving you a tool. You want to use it, use it. You don't, don't. But if you do, I want you to track the results. I want you to track the people that were engaging with you. I want you to be, this is a big thing. Always be the last person to comment. If someone comments on your post, love this information. You comment, thank you so much. If they come in back, you're welcome you're at any time. You come in back, heart, heart, heart emoji. If they come in back, star, star, star emoji. You come in back, hashtag boss, babe. If you, I mean, you don't stop until they stop. <laughs> Number one, the, the, the more engagement you have on your lives, the more people are going to see it. Number two, you are always going to be the last person communicating. Start to build relationships without ulterior motive. These are not people that you're gonna just build a network of and pitch. These are the thousands of people that have been watching you every day that just wanna remember that you're a real person, that you have a real life, that you have real loves, that you have real passions, that you have real things outside of your side business that represent who you are, that you have real fears, that life isn't perfect for you, but it's real. And you can talk about it because there's a lot of people right now that are wanting to talk, but they don't want to be sold. A lot of people want to talk right now, but they do not want to be sold. Open up the, the, the door for the conversation to begin. Don't wrap it with ulterior motive. Avoid talking about life vantage almost at all costs. What is it you do? What company you work for? Oh, girl, we'll talk about it another time. Not right now. I'm just getting to know you. I'm I'm, 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 I'm wanting to find out more stuff about you. We'll talk about me later. I like to gather interest. Imagine right now if everyone in, on this call, if your network was 200 people strong 
of people going, tell me more about what you do. Just think about that right now. Lori, imagine if you had 200 people right now that were lining up in Facebook Messenger going, tell me more about what you do. Like, it's like a network marketer's dream. That's what I want for you. Sometimes we just overcomplicate it. We get too excited. We get too passionate. We get all these things. And it's just, it really works out to being a, a lack of, not for any, uh, like, like you're, you're doing anything wrong, but just a lack of emotional intelligence when it comes to being excited about an opportunity, feeling like everyone in the world needs to be a part of this. Everyone in the world needs to do this. Again, I'll remind you, network marketing is not for everybody. There's going to be a lot of people in your life that this is not going to be for. But the ones that it is for, when you allow them to find it in the right way, will present themselves to you. They'll present themselves to you. Isn't that a crazy concept when you spend the majority of your life for your entire network marketing career searching out people? I really think they could be a really good one. I really think they could be someone strong. I really think. Imagine if you just had people coming to you. Saying, I'm ready to take this to the next level. That's what I want. But we got to break some molds. We got to break some old habits. So week two, seven days, seven Facebook lives. Um, questions. Is there anyone with any questions? So you're saying that every, so every comment, you're just saying that always reply so that your comment is the last comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Just because, again, I mean, number one, it's always good for algorithm engagement. Um, so when you're wanting people to see your stuff, and especially new people to see your stuff, if someone's commenting on your on your post that never comments on your post, you engage and they engage again, it's pushing it to more people that don't normally see it. Um, and so it's it's just, it's always good there. That's number one. And number two, it's just, it's showing them when you don't take it, people know that you're a network marketer on your page, obviously. When you don't take it to that salesy place, their guard comes down a little bit. Their walls come down. And then your next slide, they're going to hop back on and engage with you again. That's the quickest way you can get someone to stop engaging with you is to like turn them into a prospect when they didn't ask to be. When they're just getting to know you and who you are and you immediately like qualify them as needing a link and needing all that. You haven't even had a conversation with them. It's like these lives allow you to open up those doors, those conversations, to have that mutual conversation back and forth. And then I want you to track it. Track if new people got on. Track if you saw new people on your lives or engaging that, that haven't normally done it. Track if um, people ask questions about your skincare or your hair care or what supplements you're taking. Again, don't mention any names. Don't mention anything. If you're just doing a live, taking my supplements before I get the kids out to the door, just, you know, doing our daily, you know, daily routine, kids, grab your drinks. You know, you got their Axio, they're going out the door. You don't have to say, kids, grab your raspberry Axio. Just kid, grab your drink. Let's go. I got my stuff. Let's go. And you're taking your, your pills and you're doing your day. Everything does not need to be explained. And that's what I want to get to you guys is there's so much power in that simplicity of not explaining, of just living your life and people going, what are you doing? What are you taking? Well, what's that drink that you give your kids? You know, all these little things where it's like, hmm, all right. It's just a different, it's just a way to flip your brain, brain, uh, your mindset in just a little bit different way to get those people coming to you instead of chasing after them. So that's what we got for week two. I hope you guys got some value from it. I'm excited for you guys to run. Uh, forward into this next week. And uh, if you have any questions, any concerns, anything that comes up to you that you're weirded out or scared, you're, you're afraid to push that live button, uh, message me and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll push you through it. We'll, we'll do it together. But uh, Marilyn, uh, Lori, everyone, I mean, all, all the amazing uh, leaders that helped make this call happen. Thank you so much uh, for being here, for showing up, all the leaders on the call. Thank you for showing up for week two. And uh, I really look forward to hearing some of your stories and I will be watching. That's the great part about this is most of us are connected. And if we're not, I know most of your names. So it's like, Samuel, I'm going to be going to your Facebook profile 
and checking you out. And I'm going to be looking for your Facebook live. And, you know, and, and Jolene, it's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be watching you guys. And I'm so excited to see what you're going to be doing. And uh, yeah, let's make it an amazing week ahead. I'll turn it back over to you, Marilyn, and uh, just appreciate you guys. God bless. Be well. Thank you so much. This is a, an amazing challenge. So who's in? Challenge accepted. All right. And I think if we give each other love, because um, we're all going to be vulnerable, right? So let's just um, give each other props as they go live. So let's jump on and, and get that algorithm going. So thank you so much, Taylor. Excited to report back next week on results and um, excited for our next session. So have a great week. Oh, there, there's Penelope. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, we want to see her. <laughs> Do you need a grandma to babysit? I'm available. You would get no work done if I carried her throughout all these calls. Cute. Love it. Best. All right, guys. Thanks. Have a great week. Take care. Thanks again. We'll get this posted and get the replay out. Thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Oh, he's gone. Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.